Hello and good evening to all of you. You, Welcome to the On Being Well radio show. I have been off for two weeks and so I have missed each and every one of you. I am back today and we are in for an absolute treat. I have a guest with me in the studio, Dr. Yolanda Hawkins Rogers. Hey, welcome to the On Being Well show. Thank you very much. This is quite an honor to be here with you. Excellent. So listen, let's just welcome the people in, those of you that are on internet radio stations and others that are on Facebook. I just welcome you. You can be assured that right here on the On Being Well radio show, that this is a place where your heart is going to be nurtured, your soul is going to be fed, and your emotional health is valued and supported. And tonight, we are going to be talking about resiliency, building your resiliency. So you're going to want to tag a friend. You're going to want to call somebody. You're going to share this live. Get the word out. You know, we always talk about the fact that it's not enough for us to be well. We want to share that with other people. Listen, I just want to say that I'm able to come to you this evening because of 8 Squad Rebel Radio. And I encourage you to go right ahead and to like the page if you're on Facebook or Instagram. That way you'll get all of the notifications when the various shows are on. There is something for everyone. And so, of course, on Thursday evenings at 8 o'clock, I'm right here. And then on other evenings, you'll have an opportunity to listen in on other radio programming. While I'm at it, I would love for you to follow me on social media. On Facebook, I'm on being well. That's the page. On Instagram, I'm on underscore being underscore well. And I look forward to connecting with you actually here and on social media as well. So we are getting ready to jump in. And I want to introduce my guest to you. I already said her name. She is Dr. Yolanda Hawkins Rogers. And so just let me read her bio to you, okay? You know, I'm always appreciative of our guests that come by and share themselves and share their expertise. And so we have another powerhouse in the house. Oh, my. Oh, yeah. (laughs) (laughs) So Dr. Hawkins Rogers, she's a licensed psychologist. And she's the CEO of her own company. She has a thriving private practice in Bergen County. And prior to setting up her own company, Dr. Rogers, she served as the chair of the psychology and counseling department at Fairley Dickinson University, Madison campus in New Jersey. Her administrative skills were honed as chair of the department. And she led that department for six years. You are a good person to talk about this subject. <laughs> well, it's you very be, interesting. Yeah, you have, to, you you have to have a little juice, a little a little juice. Yeah. And you need some resilience, <laughs> you that's, need for some sure. resilience that's for sure. <laughs> also, Dr. Rogers' years of clinical experience skills led her to get involved in supervising individuals that are seeking their license as professional counselors in New Jersey. Her credential as a certified clinical supervisor has helped individuals develop their skills as well as their administrative skills in the fields of social work, psychology, and professional counseling. She serves as a mentor to mental health professionals seeking to start their own businesses in the field. In addition, she has initiated a mental health professional consortium aimed at a target market in Bergen County. She has founded the Consortium of Mental Health and Educational Professionals of Color of Service the Northern Region for the Northern Region of New Jersey. Her work in the community has included positions as past chair of the Commission on the Status of Women and as a member of the Community Mental Health Board of Bergen County. She currently serves on the board of the Family Service Organization in Fairlawn, New Jersey. She is an active member of the Rotary Club in Hackensack 
an executive board member of the Northeast Counties Association of Psychologists, a member of the prison ministry of Community Baptist Church in Inglewood, New Jersey, and she is an AARP volunteer for their Speakers Bureau. Whew, you said I do a I'm lot. I'm tired. <laughs> <laughs> See, listen to all that she does and the wealth of information that we have sitting right here. Her private practice has allowed her to has allowed her to interact as a clinical consultant for agencies like the Department of Children's Planning and Permanency. Is that Department of Children's uh, Protection and Permanency? Protection, DCPP. I, yeah. I always I, okay. It That's okay. <laughs> they changed the name a couple. Of Someone times. is calling in already. Oh, wow. that's great. Let's let's take the call and see who's All on. Right, then I'll come back. See. Hello, caller. Welcome to the I'm Being Well radio show. Hello. Hi. Who do we have calling in this evening? Well, I was trying to connect, but I, the uh, the app is not able to open because it's not accurate. So you're trying to log on, like, to Facebook? In Facebook, yeah. Oh, did you go to the page eight, the number eight, Squad Rebel Radio? Let's see. Um, squad eight. Well, you know what? Um, I got a text message and I clicked on the link, and so I'm in Facebook. Oh wow! Oh, wow, I'm oh. so sorry that you're now able to log on, so you can't even really listen in, huh? Yeah, I'll try again. Yeah, you know, um, you can also go, um, because if you're having that problem, someone else may be having that problem. And you can also go, if um, if you have Tune In Radio, to that app, Tune In Radio, and then you can listen in through 8 Squad Rebel Radio as well. Oh, or okay, you can I'll go to extra. YouTube as well. And then if you go on YouTube, you can see it. Oh. You can see us. And you can listen. Oh, in. okay. Who did I okay, have the pleasure okay. of speaking with, though? This is Anita. Is this Carla? Oh, hey, Janita. <laughs> yeah, you ha- you definitely have to find us. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, when I saw that this morning, I thought, oh, great, I'm going to listen in um, just to check you out. And I'll tell you the story behind resilience. Um, afterwards, but um, but it caught my attention and it was confirmation about something. Wow. So we'll talk about it later. Mm-hmm. Excellent, excellent. I'm so glad that you gave us a call and good luck signing in, okay? Okay, thanks a lot. Bye-bye. Good luck with the show. Okay. Right, bye. So, um, I hope everyone else is able to exactly. log on. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, as, as um, I'm thinking about it, Sometimes what happens, Dr. Rogers, is that people sign on, like, through different ways. Avenues, and they can't get in. It's working fine. Yeah, it is working fine. So everyone on our end, it's working fine. So if you're having a problem, you could, as I said, you can go to YouTube. You can go to TuneIn. You can go directly to 8 Squad Rebel Radio. But also, sometimes, like, if I share it to different pages... And you may be commenting, but I may not be able to see the link unless you're directly on 8 Squad Rebel Radio. So I appreciate all of you here, and I definitely want your feedback. Danita. Mm-hmm. De- Danita's on. Danita, you're on. Oh, you're not on. Oh, <laughs> but people on. are on. <laughs> We're getting help. Thank you, Zay. <laughs> Zay's helping us A lot out. Of tech help. Yes. And listen, I just want to... Um, just finish up because there's a couple of things in your bio okay. that are relevant for our conversation tonight. All right. And um, wow. Okay. Wait. I have to read all of this. Okay. Oh, no. I just saw it. <laughs> Dr. Um, Rogers, she has traveled extensively to England, China, South America, and Africa to enhance her community commitments. These experiences of other cultures have broadened her worldview that includes a multicultural perspective when designing and implementing programs, trainings, and workshops. Her interest in the universality of the human experience led to her developing and publishing a therapeutic coloring book with a twist for grown-ups. And you're going to yes, see that right twist. here. Yes. 
with a twist. We're going to talk about that. <laughs> We're going to talk about her book. And you have an opportunity to pick that book up. And we'll give you um, information about how to purchase it. Uh, Dr. Rogers, she has a strong interest in providing psychoeducation to the community. She developed workshops, presented papers nationally, regionally, and locally, and within businesses. And her topics have ranged from her research interests that included attachment, multicultural diversity, ethics, workplace professionalism, and female relational aggression. (laughs) Uh, She has written works on attachment with populations including children, adolescents, incarcerated males, female health, and children (laughs) in foster care. (laughs) (laughs) And now the show is over. Now the show is over. It's done. That was a whole hour. So welcome, welcome. Thank you so much. And welcome again. Now, we don't have our hand headphones on, so I just want to make sure everyone is hearing us clearly. So I'm just going to make sure you talk, you know, directly into the mic. Absolutely. And I'm going to do the same. And I thought I just saw a text from Danita. That she, she's on YouTube. Hey, Danita, on YouTube. Hello. <laughs> so uh, if you have questions, you have to call back in, okay? Um, or if you want to add to the conversation in any way, because I can't see your comments on YouTube, but I'm so glad that you are there. So, um, Dr. Rogers, let me just ask you, I read your bio, but I'm curious a little bit about how long have you been um, practicing in psychology? Uh, I've been practicing for over 30 years. I started when I was 10. When you were 10, <laughs> yes, yes. We were around the same age. Yeah, we were around the same age. <laughs> yeah, I started out um, in counseling, and then I went back for my doctorate in psychology, which is counseling psychology, which combines the best of both worlds as far as I'm concerned in terms of uh, discipline uh, in uh, mental health. And um, we share the commonality of uh, Rutgers University and yes. going there. So I thought it was a wonderful beginning to my career. But I've always had an interest in, um, everyone says this, helping other people. But it came to fruition um, as I went into my second career. My first career was in education uh, as an early childhood educator. And I found myself doing more work with the parents in terms of workshops, parenting workshops, social skills workshops. Uh, And I found that was a natural fit for me over education. Although I've been in education um, for 29 years as well. Right, because Mm -hmm. then even at the higher ed level, you continue. Yes, at the higher ed level, um, which led me to have a lot of exposure and work with young adults. So that led my career in um, therapy to work with young adults, emerging adults as we call them now, Yes. and uh, late adolescents. So I find that um, to be a, a very natural fit in terms of my initial group of uh, individuals that I work with. I also work now with couples. I do a lot of couples work. Okay. And I do a lot of work with females. Do I, I have a quite a bit of number of males um, but I seem to have attracted a population of uh, working females um, very career oriented females so it's sort of driven my practice in that direction Um, a lot of women who've delayed having children having families they have wonderful careers and now they're rethinking reordering their lives so they come into therapy um, I also seem to have a niche with a certain age group, women and men who are between their 30s and 50s, who are beginning to think about who they are versus living the life everyone else wants them to live. And they usually turn to therapy uh, at the point that they are facing some issues they put on the back burner for a very long time. Wow. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you definitely have a number of areas uh, where you're working. Yes. And one of the things that you mentioned, and I didn't mention it when you were sharing your bio, and I don't know if that just got past people, (laughs) but um, Dr. Rogers and I, clearly we are colleagues. Yes. 
and we also went to the same program. So we uh, graduated from the same counseling psychology program at Rutgers. Yes. So it's an a double honor. Yeah, it's, it's really something to to be back with you after this long time. It really is. Yeah, um, and to um, see how far you come and done in your career. Likewise. Yeah. Likewise. Thank you. Thank you. You know, um, it's like. God, when God has a plan for you, he's going to use your gifts and your talents. Yes. And people come back into your life at a point where they're supposed to come back into your life. Yeah, and absolutely. this is at this juncture. It's very exciting. Yeah, absolutely. To see what you're doing and to share the things that I'm doing as well. Yes, yes. You know, when you were talking, you talked about individuals kind of that like are in a transition. Yes. You talked about this population of people between 30 and 50. And they want to live authentically, I would say. Yes. That perhaps they've been living based on the expectation of what they thought they should have done. Yes. Or went in a direction where people, you know, directed them in that way and said, you're going to be good in this area. Absolutely. But now they wake up one day and they're just like, why am I here? And how did I get here? How did I get here? And and they start to examine examine a lot of things that happened in their lives very mm-hmm. early on. Um, you know, my training and yours was psychodynamic. So we look at things that happen in our past that impact the present and, and can have a, a meaning for what we do in the future. Yes. So a lot of um, young people come to me at the point that their children have reached the age that they experience some tragedy or trauma in their lives. And that speaks to their ability to manage what's going forward. How does it all fit? So it's, it's, uh, it's very daunting. And I talk a lot about um, what the research says now, and this is anecdotal research. I haven't done any hard research in a while, but I see that every 10 years, I think people still continue to go through some developmental changes. Okay. Mm -hmm. So in your 20s, you're exploring, you're having fun, you're you're finishing college, or you're thinking about college, or you just started a career. You may have a love interest, but it's not really serious. You get a lot of debt. In your 30s, you begin to settle down with one person. If If you don't have children, you think about having children. Uh, For those who missed their 20s and and, um, had children early on in their 30s, they're now wanting to begin to think about themselves in a meaningful way. In their 40s, people begin to think about, is this the right person for me to be with? If I've been with them for a length of time, 20 years or so, do I want to stay in this neighborhood? Do I want to have more children? And I'm also on a career path. So people start to make changes in their careers in their 40s. In their 50s, women feel a little bit more liberated and men become um, more inclined to close in. It's sort of a reversal of roles. Women begin to reproduce in a different way and not having children, but they become more creative. Men become more homebodies. So it's a pattern. This is the pattern I've seen with, with the folks that I've dealt with. Well, that's an interesting uh, way of looking at growth and development over time and then looking at it gender specifically. I kind of want to use really what you just talked about to go a little bit deeper into our conversation tonight because I know people have come on specifically because we're going to be talking about how to build resiliency. Yes. And I imagine um, that perhaps we may be well, definitely we're faced with different developmental tasks at different times, right. which in some ways suggests that we build resiliency differently over time. Absolutely. And from our, our background and our training, we know that we have to look at the past to be able to figure out where this person is going forward. So those individuals who are more successful in therapy are those who had some built-in resilience either innately or environmentally that's that helps them Mm -hmm. be able to negotiate and navigate through the the experiences that they're currently having so that resilience is resiliency is very important Um, it speaks to a, a person's ability to cope when they're extremely stressed when there's a crisis 
it's their ability to rebound when something happens and it's also their ability to adapt to situations and those individuals who learn um, how to do that early on in their lives use those same tools to manage um, current crises okay so you said to adapt to to, rebuild to to rebuild and to be able to cope and to cope right so this is when the audience really starts thinking about resiliency right they're really able now to kind of think about three areas right to just kind of take a look at what does that look like okay. for themselves mm -hmm. and their um, individual mm -hmm. life well we know it, there's al it's just always a story of the person who against all odds was able to make a success of him or herself how did they do that? Yes. They didn't have the family. They didn't live in the best neighborhood. But something about them innately may be present or there was something in the environment, a person or a thing that allowed them to see, I can manage this. I can rebound from this crisis. No matter how many times I've, I've fallen down, I've experiences, uh, experienced failures, I can still try to make it. You know, as you say that, I think a little bit about individuals who want to build resiliency. Right. And you talked about ways of acquiring it. One way was that it's innate. It's something that's within someone. Mm -hmm. And then the other way is externally. Absolutely. That it may be based on experience or based on individuals. And so um, I want to talk a little bit more about the innate quality and is that either you have it or you don't or can it be built so what are your thoughts about that well i think it goes back to the argument of nature versus nurture so you take for example a baby that's born who may have some physical disabilities but they have a very strong environment the parents are very involved they're going to make sure this child uses every resource available to be successful. So even though the child's physically vulnerable, they have a resilient environment. Mm. So the child has the environment to help them adapt, to cope, to manage. So that's the environmental piece. Then you can have a baby that's born you know, physically strong, very healthy, but the environment is very vulnerable. The parents aren't present. They don't know how to manage. But they're physically able to manage things. Something about them intuitively and inter internally is there so they can overcome the disadvantages that exist in the environment. Right. So it depends a lot on what the child is exposed to, that they can learn to adapt and learn the skills of resiliency. Most of the times when people come to therapy, um, in that age category that I was talking about, they're trying to learn how to cope differently than they have in the past. Yes. Right? They're living with a lot of hurt and pain, and they haven't done as well as they want because they haven't learned the skills about how to adapt, to rebound, how to cope. And, that's, and you can build resiliency. You right. Can, you know, it, it is something that you can learn. So as you have talked about and kind of laid it out, uh, environment and then the kind of inherent qualities that a person has yes. when you were talking about that I was thinking a little bit about temperament and how sometimes exactly. yeah you know you're born and you're just kind of born as a kid that wants to explore the world you're independent Absolutely. you take risks right. as opposed to that child that's born very timid very shy right. fearful um, but as what you're saying is regardless of your temperament that we can still build resiliency we can still learn Absolutely. some of those skills um, to build resiliency and then actually I, I when I was just talking I think about the fact that you know depending on temperament resiliency probably looks different so sometimes we may feel like people that are outgoing, that are talkative, are the ones that have more resilience, not but that's not necessarily that's not the case. Ne they've learned to use a veneer, a facade about mm -hmm. who they are. And then those are the ones who will come into therapy and people are surprised. Why are you in therapy? You seem to be so gregarious. You seem to be able to manage. Right. But internally, there are things that they haven't had in the environment to 
help support them. So they've learned how to cope up to a certain point. And now they need to examine some things to go back and release themselves from those issues that have held them back. You know, what I think is so interesting about what you just said is that sometimes a person who is very outgoing may be wondering what is wrong. Why am I hitting a brick wall? Why am I having meltdowns when no one is looking? Absolutely. Like I'm strong. Yes, right. I'm <laughs> and I am resilient. It's not that there's no level of resiliency. Right. Exactly. Uh, at the same time, um, just that quality of how one presents themselves or interacts with the world doesn't mean that we don't want to go back or need to go back and just kind of take a look at how to build other areas. Absolutely, because you know, there's, a, you know, if you think of a, ourselves as a as a well, we keep going into the well and using the resources we have to manage, but then we can have crisis upon crisis and trauma upon trauma. So we've just gotten to the bottom of the well, and there's not much left. Where do we go? We need to go and talk with others to help us try to begin to see there are other coping strategies around to be more proactive versus reactive to situations that occur. And a lot of times that's um, when people come into therapy. It's reactive because yes. I, I've been able to manage and now all of a sudden I'm numb because I haven't had the reserves built over time to manage those things. So there are a few things that you can do, but we can get into that you know, as we talk about what you can do. So, okay. it, so before we get into that, right, right. because we're talking live, we're talking good <laughs> up in here. I want to make sure people are in, they're listening, that you are resonating with this. If they're, if you're resonating with you, okay, here's the comments. I'm like, where are the comments? I just had to scroll down. <laughs> so <laughs> if it's resonating with you, feel free to lo love, feel free to like. And I see you. I see you here. I see your comments. Terry uh, says, praise the Lord and good evening. So she's giving <laughs> us a shout out. I see Crystal, Brenda. I see Face on here. Um, Crystal said, I can see you, ladies. Hey, Crystal. Hi. How are you? <laughs> June is on. Lisa. Hey, Lisa. How you doing? I think Lisa, you probably are usually working around this time because I don't necessarily see you on, but I'm glad that you are here. And then I see Mr. Ware. Praise the Lord, ladies. And I see the loves and I see the light. Okay, now, now, now we're, <laughs> we're, we're rolling here. We're rolling here. I, I'm getting life just as I get your feedback, your comments, and I see your loves and I see your likes. And so we have laid this foundation around how one day an individual may notice that perhaps I was functioning well. Yes. I'm now at a different stage of life and things seem to be, be, be becoming more challenging. Yes. I think um, even if we're not at a different stage, sometimes we move into different life experiences. Yes, we do. And different life experiences also challenge us to grow, to develop, Absolutely. to stretch. Um, and so we really want to be able to meet the demands of daily life. And let me just, so you've um, defined resiliency. And now we're going to talk about how do people build that resiliency? Well, you, there's so many different things out there today that helps people build resiliency. But I always recommend therapy. And for the African-American community, I find more people are looking at it as something for people who are well-adjusted because really therapy is for uh, um, those who are well-adjusted as well as for those who are more mentally fragile. It's for everybody. Right, it is for everybody. <laughs> Everyone can benefit exactly. from looking at the, the self. Exactly. So, mm -hmm. so self-examination is, is not new to the black community, but it's more acceptable that even if you have a strong religious base, it doesn't mean that you cannot get outside help. So I always tell uh, my clients, if you broke your arm, would you try to put it in the cast yourself? No. Mm, that I sounds painful. Right. <laughs> 
Why would you try to do that? You're not, you don't have the expertise. Right. So it doesn't go against any of your religious beliefs. It is a complement to other things that you're doing as a support. So one of the things about building resiliency is to have a support network. Right. So your new support network may not look like your old support network. That's, that's good right, right there. True. So a lot of people um, have had friends or even family members who have been a support n- network, but now they're trying to move to another level. And those people in, in his or her environment may not be as helpful as you're trying to break away from some behaviors. Okay, uh, So it's important to be able to know you can build new support systems. Yes. And that's very important. And a lot of people don't realize that they can do it. And it's not easy. Right. Um, But if the old support systems aren't where you are at that moment, then you need to examine that and to reach out for other kinds of help, you know, and and exists all around Mm -hmm. us. So that's resilience if you're studying to be uh, a, a... x-ray technician and everyone in your family has been in the auto business and they want you to stay there and you need to be you know you have some qualities some abilities but they've been held back then you have to be able to um, seek support groups that will help you live your dream and that's helping you to build some resilience to forces that may be opposing you as you try to reach your new level absolutely (laughs) You, are you uh, g- going to continue with the relationship piece, or will you get ready to move on? No, no, but go, no. If you want to say something about well, no, the relationship, I, no, because I think that that was such an important aspect to even start with. Yeah, and I also think about um, for people who don't have a support network at all. Right. So y- yes, there may be the need to su- to shift support network. And there are sometimes we find ourselves in a place where we just have not necessarily built the support networks for, for whatever reason. Exactly. And that l- can really leave us feeling very isolated, very, feeling very alone. Yes. When life is happening, it's kind of like, where do you turn? Who do you turn to? And having someone, you know, t- that you can reach out to, someone that you can laugh with, They may not be your everything and all, but I do think as you were talking about that, I think about building little by little small steps, identifying people that are already in our world. I think that's what you were saying. Absolutely. You know, if um, you're at at work and no, they don't have to become your best friend, but they may be your work buddy, lunch buddy, walking partner, something like that. So. So you have little different silos of people who meet the needs for where you are. Yeah. And yes. and be okay with it. And I think for um, our community, I think that's really important that not one person or one group may meet all your needs. Yes, absolutely. And so you need to, to be able to move out. So that's one of the things we talk about in therapy too, to get you to listen to your own voice and to be able to move forward to do the kinds of things that means you have to step out of your comfort zone. Listen or your to your resistance own, zone. Right. Listen to your own voice. Right. Step out of your comfort zone. Right. Step out of your resistance the, zone. Yes. Wow, those are three exactly. huge yeah. things for people to just let that resonate. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's very it's very difficult. And it's a process. So it doesn't happen all at once. So right. you know, applying your support networks is getting connected with positive relationships a lot of times people are connected to relationships that have existed for so long they don't look at it as negative or positive until they try to change something in their lives and they they get resistance right so you have to get connected to other people you have to try something different that helps build resilience yeah Right. If you never go on ice skating, you've only roller skated, you need to try ice skating. Yeah. See how well you do. Because you will see that that helps you feel better about yourself to overcome things that um, have felt like a lot of obstacles in your life. And that helps to build the resilience that you want. Yeah. 
You know, as you um, were talking, I started to think about the fact that sometimes in relationships, because relationships can be so challenging, yes, it almost feels like we're breaking down at times. And it just kind of made me think about the fact that the road to resilience is not a straight path. No. You know, sometimes there's this expectation that, okay, yeah, I'm building resilience and everything should go smoothly and I'm, you know, walking on cloud nine and then life happens <laughs> and things fall through the cracks. So, um, you know, so it's not a straight path. And I think the other thing about relationships is that relationships challenge us to look within ourselves so when we're having those challenges and those difficulties, sometimes that is also the process of building resilience. Absolutely. Self-examination and then looking across the table mm. and examining what's over there is very important to making the change that you want. Yes. And a lot of times that's, that's where we see some resistance. So, you know, every day, the other part of um, building um, uh, resilience is and this seems tried and true, but it's, it's, it works. It really does work. To keep track of your successes. Remember when you have been successful versus when you haven't done so great. Oh, that's good. So a lot of times, if you, I had this conversation five times and it didn't work. But eight other times it did work. Right. Why am I concentrating on the five times that it didn't work? Yes put more energy into the conversations that were successful. We tend to, when we ask um, um, individuals to say, name five things that you like about yourself. Well, it could be a struggle for someone who mm -hmm. hasn't learned about their own good qualities and believes them. Yes. But they can rattle off five things that they don't like about themselves right. very quickly. So the question is, why is that? What do we remember more than anything else? If we, if you come home from school and you have nine A's and one B, Focus and the concentration on, B, right? on the B instead of the A's, right? It took a lot of work to get those A's, but we tend to focus on the least of our accomplishments instead of the things that we've been successful. Yes. So that's really important. Um, I think for any of our um, men and women who are in the military, I think one of the things that gets them going if they've suffered some um, tragedy, some loss of limb, or have had some uh, mental difficulties, the buildup is about how you survive, not uh. how you suffered a loss or yes. the tragedy. Yes. That's how we have to reorder our thinking. It's called cognitive restructuring yes. to kind of concentrate on the things that have been successful in our lives. No matter how, how small, there are accomplishments toward a goal of being a better person, being a better mate, being a better worker, just being a better human being. And uh, that's really the lesson. And that's not something that... Um, is taught as frequently as it can be to our children. Yes. Right. If children are in school and all they hear is, he's a bad boy, she has ADHD, this and that, what about the qualities that help that child get to where they were? Right. And to concentrate and on those things and to um, talk about the successes that children have and adults have. Because adults are little children inside if they haven't been um, recognized for their accomplishments. Right. They still hold on to those childhood memories that were painful, that held them back. So that's important. Yeah. You know, um, I like, um, as you were kind of talking about the cognitive restructuring, the reality that we have a negative tendency to, b to bend. We have a tendency to bend in a negative direction. Yes. And you talked about shining that spotlight on the things that we're doing well, what's positive. Yes. And I even think about during the hard times when we are having difficulties or we're facing certain challenges. And it's so easy to look at everything that's going wrong. Absolutely. And like you said, it's kind of looking at, well, the fact that, you know, I didn't give up. Yes. 
The fact that I was afraid to go in and talk to my boss, but I did it. Yes. As yeah. opposed to w focusing on, oh, I was so anxious. Right. Yeah, but you, you win. That's right. And even if you don't have the outcome you want, you made success towards reminding yourself that you can do these things, that it took a lot more courage to do it than not to do it. Yeah. And that helps build resilience as well. Celebrate our successes. Celebrate our successes. And do, now we talk a lot about doing a gratitude journal. Yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Very important. And a lot of people don't think it's that important, but it makes such a difference to say, um, hey, I woke up this morning. That seems minor. Well, yeah, I woke up. Well, not everybody did. That, very true. <laughs> and some people woke up with something in a misshapen way that didn't allow them to be able to talk or to walk. Those, those seem minor, but as we go through our day, we need to be able to be thankful that we weren't the victims of road rage or uh, we got missed by a minute by someone coming into a bank and robbing a bank. And I, I guess I'm being a little facetious, but we have to be able to say those things that we're grateful for, that our children got home safe from school, that I still have another day at my job, that I didn't have a, a run-in with someone at work, to look at the things that we're grateful for during the day, that we don't really put a lot of weight on, usually. Yeah. You know, with that gratefulness, I've... Um had shows on gratefulness and I've looked at wow. that and looked at the research yeah. that looks at when we are grateful and how that's positively correlated with happiness. Yes. So people that have more gratefulness tend to feel more satisfied in life and just be happier yes. with their existence. Yes. And I think the thing that you talked about in terms of focusing on that we woke up, I always think about the fact that if we're here, it means that we have purpose. Absolutely. And we may not recognize it. It may be confusing. It may be shifting. But again, all of that is part of us really developing ourselves yes. and preparing us for the next leg of the journey. That's exactly right. And it's, it's looking at the, the dots that connect. When I think about my own career, I never thought about my working with children in a daycare center would have any relevance to what I'm doing now. I didn't wow. see the big picture, but it all played out. I yes. work with children. I do child development. I, you know, I do psych evaluations and yes. all of that helped to build where I am today and what I've um, done. And I'm very grateful for every experience. Yes. Um, whether I wasn't getting paid much money, but it was, I, I looked at it from a point of view of, this is going to help me somewhere along the line mm -hmm. because this was meant for this to happen to me. Right. And it's going to be part of my bigger picture as I go along. And we continue to have hope as an individual. That's really part of being a human being. We never give up wanting to be. That helps us survive grief and trauma. When we suffer from trauma, part of it is to be able to get through it is to know that internally our systems want to move past the trauma yes. to be able to be and the more resilience we have the the easier the task is we never mm -hmm. get over lots of trauma but we can see it and contextualize it differently okay you know, by being grateful for what we have and by being able to move through it yes yes mm -hmm. and as you say that it just um makes me be mindful again for those that are listening that help is available and we don't have to do it alone no there are times when we will do it alone there's yes. time you know we are self-healing yes and therapy is not the only avenue to healing no i've talked to so many people i've had so many guests on who have tremendous stories of a lot of trauma and they were really able to overcome their trauma in a lot of different ways. Yes. Sometimes it did not include therapy. Now, it doesn't mean that later they won't go back to therapy, right. that there's not, you know, perhaps still an area um, that they may want to take a look at, or maybe they have just, you know, totally been healed. Right. I do think that 
it's important for everyone to know that at times when, you know, I've given it my best shot, I have strategies, you know, I've coped, I know what to do, but I still feel like I'm kind of drowning. Yes. That therapy is a safe place and it's a sacred place and it's a place that you work with another person. You're journeying Absolutely. with someone to address Absolutely. those issues that are coming up. I always say, um, Dr. Rogers, I have uh, been on both sides of the couch. I'm proud to say that. Yes. I understand that because I took the time to heal, that I'm able to be where I am and do what I do, even in a different way. Yes. And it's a, it's a journey. And we always have to be able to do some self-reflection. I can't manage it. Most people will say, well, I'm at a point where I thought I could handle it, and I thought I had all this support and help, but I need someone objective. I need someone on the outside to help me. And that's a sign of strength. Yes. And that's a sign of resiliency to be able Absolutely. to say it. Absolutely. The research says by the time someone decides to come into the door, they're 33% on their way to where they want to go in therapy. Right. So it takes a lot to right. get to that point. Yes, it does. Yeah. So it's it's the reading. It's involving yourself with other people. It's staying connected. It's doing journaling. Um and to think of your past successes, that's really important. And to remain hopeful about the yes, future. Yes. That's something that we can always count on, being hopeful about what's going to happen next. Um, if we didn't have that, we wouldn't have all the inventions and all the wonderful things that we have in this world. People just thought, this is the end. There's no point in trying yeah. <laughs> to perfect CDs. And now we're down to just doing things on the Internet. Without CD, someone thought, I'm going to keep trying. That's I'm going right. to keep working at it. To, think, to be future-oriented is really important. So, listen, you have given some great, four, really, strategies to resiliency. If we had another hour, we could just <laughs> go on. But Going I want back. to just, again, remind the audience as you're listening and as you are working on your own resiliency, because it is something that we're constantly working on. Uh, we're constantly mindful of the mm -hmm. four things you mentioned are relationships that importance of relationships right. you mentioned having a positive outlook looking at the positive not focusing so much on the, the negative exactly. you talked about having hope yes very important and you um talked about you you put you Cope, being able to cope and to think about the things that you've had successes with versus that, the think things about the things you had successes, successes with. with. Yes. Concentrate on that versus the things that other people will say. You'll never be able to you can, think yes. about what you have achieved. And the other is the last one. Number I five. Add, being proactive. That means if today mm. you wanted to stay in bed all day, but tomorrow you're going to get up for two minutes and walk around the block. Be proactive in terms of your life. To make your plan. Yes. If it's a plan for tomorrow, and then tomorrow's a plan for two days hence, then start with that. If you if you're not able to see beyond that, but making a plan, a lot of people call it now um, being proactive in terms of making vision boards. Yes. Mm -hmm. That helps too in terms of so those little strategies may not all seem connected, but they are in terms of unconsciously building. Um, your resistance to things that get in the way, to building your resistance. Yeah, it's undergirding. It's un absolutely yeah, so it's it's kind undergirding. Right, exactly. Adding all of the stones on the wall. Absolutely. It's like the foundation. Absolutely. So you want to have a strong absolutely. foundation. Yeah. And I have to leave time to talk about <laughs> your book. Because even as we talk about resiliency, your book is another opportunity for people to work towards resiliency and to manage stress. And I have not seen your book. I need to hold it in my hands. Thank oh my you. Goodness. Oh, yes. I, I need a copy. I need a copy you in my hands. In your hands. Wow. So tell us about your book, the name of the book, and well, a little bit about your book. <laughs> and if you're on watching, I'm holding that up for you. I have two covers, but I like oh, that two one. covers, two different you covers. Bring the other one? I brought the other. Cover. Oh, very nice. Um, okay. The 
the point of it of designing the book was that I used to give coloring books to my friends and family when I visited in the hospital or they were recuperating. So I'd buy a coloring book and bring crayons. And then I thought, why don't you make your own? So I decided I wanted to do something a little differently to bring a little humor to people who are trying to heal. Because nice. a lot of times people are sad. And I found through my research that adults like to color. Yes. And it's a big, big booming business now. But I looked, I did research for about two years and looked at the different coloring books that were on the market. Most of them were abstract. They didn't deal with the human experience. So right, I said, absolutely. I'm going to develop one with a twist. Wow, that's nice. Yes. That's a good point because right. you write flowers. Flowers. It's, it's shapes. It's, it's uh, animals. It? Yes, shapes, animals. Yeah. Nothing that really dealt with. Um, my life. My like, life. This is my situation. Exactly. So there are different kinds of projectors, but this was to, to be down to earth so people could relate to the stories. The stories are universal in nature, so it goes across different cultures. Yeah. So in the coloring book, there are all different um, cultures represented mm -hmm. and different funny scenes about the, covers, the cover um, of the book is about a woman who, as we've all experienced, if you've ever been hospitalized, coming around to take your temperature at 2 o'clock in the morning. I know, like, why? <laughs> why? <laughs> and, and why is it 2 o'clock in the morning and what that feels like? And um, It says, you want to take my temperature at 2 o'clock in the morning? Her <laughs> face is like, really? Really? Like, so So I, I thought about about 20 different scenarios, and um, I came up with the captions, and then I thought about how I would like to have them illustrated, and I found a young lady online who does um, black and white illustrations. Mm -hmm. So she made my idea come to life. I and love this. so it took about, it took three years altogether to get it um, from in my head to an actual reproduction. But I'm very proud and passionate about it because I think this goes along with helping people to cope. When we're talking about coping by yourself, this is something you can do. You can color in it. You could just look at the pictures. There's also some blank pages where you can draw your own pictures mm, or whatever nice. you'd like. Yeah. Um, so that people can heal quietly and happily and they can share it with others. It makes a great gift to give to a friends and family. I test marketed it with people who were surviving cancer and wow. they found it very healing to be yeah. able to look at the humorous side of some of the things that they experience so that was my point in developing it so i have uh, i have it on amazon and barnes and noble and i'm i'm going around um, um promoting it because i think it's very important feelings is what we talk about and what we get away from yeah but when we know how how we feel about things that helps us have more resilience to be able to speak our truth to other people and to not be afraid about the healing process yeah, and to not be afraid to talk about the stresses we experience. And that's, that was the, the genesis of, the, uh, of this wow. therapeutic coloring books, I said, for grown-ups. So it was marketed for people over 40, but I find that my people of all ages tend to like it. So yeah. I, I thought that was interesting. And I'm in the middle of developing one specifically for adolescents. A couple of guidance wow. counselors said they're using coloring books in high schools for children who are um, in, in school <laughs> detention. Yes. So it's another therapeutic method of wow. helping people here who uh, um, adolescents who feel isolated or alone. So I'm, I'm very happy about it and excited about it. <laughs> you, you should be, and I am happy and excited with you and for you. Again, the name of the book is Feelings, a Therapeutic Coloring Book for Grown-Ups. <laughs> Feelings, a Therapeutic Coloring Book for Grown-Ups by Yolanda Hawkins Rogers. And you can pick that up at Amazon or at Barnes & Nobles. Yes. And, you know, I was just thumbing through. <laughs> and as you were talking, I was just kind of giggling here because it is humorous. Yes. And I can see how it would provide an opportunity for someone in this position to laugh at themselves. Yes, You absolutely. know, because sometimes, you know, <laughs> some of the things that we think and sometimes some of the things that we do, 
if we really think about it, like we are hilarious. Like, I, there's one. Yes. I just kind of want to share. Well, I kind of like this one too, but this guy who uh, apparently has not missed a meal. <laughs> he says, hey, this fit last year. <laughs> you know, so again, you know, it's kind of like as I look down and I, I see stuff down. is growing yes. and stuff like that. It's kind of like, oh, OK. Yeah. All righty yeah, then. The suits sh- shrank in the closet. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, I was thinking about the process uh, because because as you have um, developed this with a twist and it, it really is a twist. I have not seen okay. a book that just is real life and even as you talk about kids in detention and to be able to have these different themes of how they got there and what they're doing while they're <laughs> right, there exactly. you, know, you know that exactly. just sounds hilarious yes, to me true. um but i was also thinking about the process of actually doing the coloring on an area of something that we are actually um struggling with yes something that we're kind of dealing with right in that moment absolutely and what are your thoughts about um how that impacts individuals ability to kind of shift change or modify behavior well i think that the act of allowing yourself to get lost in yourself Mm. and lost in the in the act of coloring is something that was very soothing as a child so it takes us back to a childhood activity that was soothing and relaxing. So as we're looking at the pictures that we can relate to, the different stories, it also lets us release some of the tension and stress we have around that experience we're having and enjoying the coloring, the process of coloring. Because every place that I've gone and you know we've dealt with this, they look at the stories, they think they're funny, and then they get really into the coloring. So yeah. they get transported into yes. another dimension about releasing the stress and tension. And that was the intent of it. I could see that. As well. I could definitely see that. <laughs> I just have to share one more. Okay. Which is so funny. I relate to this. Not that I was in a wheelchair or I couldn't walk, but I relate to shoes because I like shoes. <laughs> And so there's a woman, she's in the wheelchair and she's just looking at her shoes like, uh, I'll be back in those heels very soon. <laughs> right. <laughs> that would be me. Like, why? Be, why? A young person or older person, I, I'm going to get back in those two inch heels <laughs> sooner or later. <laughs> so, um, you know, we have reached the top of the hour. Yeah, it goes very quickly oh when goodness. we're in the sea. Yeah. And there was so much more to <laughs> be able to talk about, but Just as we are winding down, I'm just wondering if there's any parting words that you want to share with the listening audience, anything uh, you want them to know or think would be important to kind of leave with. Um, I, I think the most important thing is that the radio show that you're doing is very important. Reaching people in their homes in their places of safety or places that aren't safe, that you can get help in so many different ways and that's important. And to seek it out and to feel comfortable about who you are and what you are and how you are and be able to to, um, repeat that to yourself on a daily basis. It helps you manage all the stresses in our lives and we have a lot of stresses going on in our in our community and in our environment these days. So seek out the help, but remember that you have, we are innately resilient in lots of ways. And if it isn't innate, we can certainly reach out and get the skills to become more resilient. I think that is such an excellent point mm-hmm. to end on. <laughs> I thank you so much for thank coming you on behind. Me. Yeah, the On Be and Well show. You have given a wealth of information. I'm glad you enjoyed it. I so enjoyed this. (laughs) Thank (laughs) you. The people have enjoyed you. If you've enjoyed Dr. Rogers, let me see some loves and let me see some likes and let's encourage her heart as she continues to go out and she does this important work. I can see this going, taking off in so many directions. (laughs) I, I really, really, I can. And, um, I support you in your work. Thank you. And, um, Having said that, you know, we are at the end of the show. I realized I never even introduced myself. You I was not. so excited <laughs> <laughs> about Dr. Rogers. I just jumped right in. But some of you may not have met me before. And so if you're listening in and this is your first time, I'm Dr. Carla Cook. 
I am your host of the On Being Well radio show. I am a psychologist. I am also an author of the On Being Well workbook, Foundations of Positive Emotional Health. And I just have an interest in supporting you and being your best self. And that's why I show up every week on Thursdays at 8 o'clock. That's why I'm engaged in social media. And that's why I want to continue to partner with you. And we can do that by you liking my social media pages. I'm going to be looking for you now (laughs) on the On Being Well page on Facebook and on underscore being underscore well on Instagram. Of course, I'm able to be here because of 8 Squad Rebel Radio. And so feel free if you're on Facebook to go ahead and like that page. That way you will get the notices when I come on 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 Thursday evenings, Mm -hmm. but you'll also get notices about other shows. Uh, There's something for everyone. And Brenda, thank you so much for sharing the live. I see you have shared or you liked, but Hey, if you didn't get the opportunity to share, please do. So people can always catch the replay. And because you've been listening in, you know that what was shared tonight with my special guest, Dr. Yolanda Hawkins Rogers, was so valuable. I thank you so much for showing up and valuing what is done here on the On Being Well radio show. God bless each and every one of you, and good night. You you want to say good night? Good night, and thank you again. H-Squad Rebel Radio. Talked about internet radio station in the lion.